Hi friends, welcome to project time. Can you guess what I have designed for you this time? Look at this board. This is an isolated edge bridge or full bridge DC motor driver and from DC motor, I mean for example this kind of brushed DC motors. Look at how strong and how heavy it is. Look at its shaft or the fan to dissipate the heat of the motor in high current. And this one, it has a gearbox in front to enhance the torque of the motor, the same as the gearbox of your car. These kind of motors are used in the ATM devices to count and handle the money or the receipt to you. So the sound you, you hear from the ATM device comes from this motor. Anyway, as a result, you can control almost all kind of brush DC motors using this circuit. And the main benefit of the edge bridge or full bridge motor driver circuit is that you can change the rotation direction of the motor without changing the polarity of the supply. Just you need to change the PWM input uh, of the circuit. I will explain later on. You can download all of the project files, I mean Altium uh, design files from my personal Altium 365 cloud space. First, you should register on the Altium 365 by following this link in my YouTube video description. So just follow the link and register on the website. Then simply follow this link and download all of the project files for free from my personal Altium 365 Cloud Space. I explained the board just briefly and I will uh, provide you full explanation of the schematic and PCB in the next step. These two terminals are to connect the supply and these two terminals are to connect the motor. These uh, four powerful N-channel MOSFETs to control the motor. These two chips are two half bridge uh, driver uh, ICs. So each of these chips will control two of these MOSFETs and these two capacitors are for noise uh, reduction and also to enhance the stability of the circuit. And this one is a digital isolator chip. And I made a lot of research to find this uh, low price digital isolator chip because the main drawback of these chips, they are pretty nice, but the main drawback is they are expensive. So I did a lot of research and find this low price, very nice digital isolator chip. Look at the back side of the PCB. So you should follow the same thing to provide this isolation isolation gap and also this creepage area okay so you will inject your PWM pulse and also the external supply from this pin header okay and this uh, XH connector is to connect the 12 volts regulator supply to the circuit and I will explain why I put this connector here otherwise you can get this supply from the input supply okay and lastly, these four Schottky diodes are to protect the MOSFETs even better. The backside is almost a solid ground plane, except for these four tracks. So pretty much that's it. Let's go to the next step. I will explain the schematic and PCB. All right, here is the homepage of my Altium 365 cloud space and I have uploaded all of these seven projects so far. The rest, these ones, belong to the Altium itself. You can use them as a sample. So this is my, my Venitar cloud space. You can do the same, of course. You can create your own space for free. Just follow this link in my YouTube video description and register on the Altium 365. Then come here and upload your projects and add members or I mean your college or friend to that project. So you may ask, 
Here you may ask what's the main benefit of this Altium 365. This Altium 365 cloud space has many benefits, but the main benefit is when you are working on a project in a company, freelancer or whatever, and especially if the project in comp is complex, each team member wants to modify, edit, comment, for example, changing a value of the resistor, of a capacitor, defining a rule, adding a comment. How many times you want to exchange emails between your friends or colleagues for these modifications and you will live in a mess of files and emails. And this is prone to errors, time waste of time, waste of money, because when you waste time, you, uh, your project delivery will be late, which means waste of money also. But here in the Altium 365, when you apply a modification, when you put a comment or whatever, all of that team members will get that update instantly live on the cloud. And all of you, all of you work on a single PCB. And you don't need to exchange these many times. And if you have work on a complex project, you understand, you feel what I mean. So I think it's not necessary to, necessary to explain more. Got it? So uh, here is the last project. And uh, this is the project files. This one is the schematic diagram. This one is the PCB layout. And this one is a 3D view of the PCB board. Let me explain the schematic. This K1 is the main input connector. This one, this big one, that black one. Here is the XH connector. Here goes through an RC filter. This is a 5 volts regulator. Look at this nice feature. When I put the mouse on the net, it highlights the net. You see? Very nice feature for presentation. So this LED and these two capacitors for noise reduction and stabilize this 5 volts uh, regulator. This is the digital isolator chip. And remember this part number. It's a very nice and low price chip. I, th I think the price is around 25 or 30 cents. So one of the drawbacks of these digital isolators is the price but this one pretty cheap and pretty powerful I can say look at the data sheet so this company chip chip analog signal rate DC to 115 megabits wide operation supply voltage 2.5 to 5.5 so most of the time we play with 3.3 or 5 volt supply and logic and this chip uh, uh, support both of them very nice isn't it so read this data sheet I I don't I don't follow the data sheet just read just read this and let me tell you that I have used this part number I have used this one okay so it is page four read the, uh, read this data sheet yourself okay these two capacitors uh, are decoupling capacitors one for desk ground and one desk ground i mean from uh, one uh, two side of the isolation one one for this side and one for this side ic2 and uh, ic1 and rc2 are pretty famous and old chips but still in production ir2104 pretty famous half bridge uh, mosfet driver chip uh, so each of them drive a half bridge and both of them would be a full bridge or uh, edge bridge okay and you will control these two using these two PWM pulses and these two PWM pulses go through this digital isolator chip so this is the main picture of this schematic these four diodes for protection of these MOSFETs a external diode there they are not mandatory but i prefer to add these diodes uh, just a few cents more this capacitor for noise reduction and some people put a capacitor i mean no polarized capacitor something like a polyester or mkt type capacitor here 
but I didn't put I prefer that you put that capacitor just on the input of the motor on the connector of the motor okay as close as possible to your load to your motor do not put the capacitor on the board that's why there is no capacitor here okay so let's go to the PCB this is the PCB layout look at the features of this software look at you can turn on and off the layers if I show you the top layer so because these areas would carry a high amount of current you can see the copper is pretty thick okay it's the same for the bottom layer you see the bottom layer is ground also the ground will carry a high amount of current and also will have a duty has a duty to for noise reduction and to reduce the length of the ground pass that's why I have designed the ground like this you see let me disable the top overlay now it's better you see uh, except for these four tracks I can call it almost a solid ground plane this helps to reduce the length of the ground pass and also the impedance of the ground pass means better stability lower noise for the circuit and higher performance this is the top it's easier to demonstrate isn't it so you see it this Altium 365 is almost like a PCB editor you see you have all of the features or most of the features you need to demonstrate or put comment or edit and these wires these wires or vias some people call it vias also to re reduce the length and impedance of the ground path and I put it near these critical areas if I enable the top overlay you can see near the ground pin of these two capacitors and here near the pins of these MOSFET driver chips also near this ground this decoupling decoupling capacitor near this ground this isolated part I uh, this decoupling capacitor I think I have covered all of the standards necessary for this circuit I can I cannot mention the exact current handling of this board because it depends on your application and where you use it but at least I can say if you use a good heat sink at least it would deliver 20 amps uh, at least I can guarantee this more than this I cannot say it depends but at least I can say 20 amps would be feasible or possible maybe more than this with the more thicker copper okay you order the, uh, the PCB with thicker copper little bit more expensive so nothing very much remains here except that these copper areas also help to dissipate the heat of these MOSFET MOSFETs however if you use this for high currents I suggest that you mount a heat sink on these MOSFETs also or maybe even a fan on the heat sink it depends so you can you see the isolation gap and creepage area here it's pretty obvious isn't it so I think I covered most of the points all right now I'm gonna test this edge bridge or full bridge DC motor driver circuit however let me explain what's going on here this is the board here is the supply wires to the board 12 volts and because the supply is 12 we can connect this X edge connector to the supply because both of them is 12 otherwise if your supply is higher than 12 we have to use a regulator a buck converter or a linear regulator to provide a fixed and stable 12 volts for this side this controller this X edge and if your supply is below 12 you have to use another supply something else uh, to provide again 12 volts for this side so this X edge needs 12 volts regulated that's it so this load uh, is connected to this DC motor this brush DC motor for the PWM input I use this cheap 
Arduino board because why? I could use a waveform generator, but if I use a waveform generator, some beginners might think this is complex and they have to use a waveform generator in practice. But because this digital isolator chip is compatible for both 3.3 and 5 volts logics, both in the input signal and also for the VCC, pretty nice. So we can use this 5 volts Arduino board. If you have a 3.3 volts board, you can also power this digital isolator and also apply that 3.3 volts logic, PWM logic signals to the input. So I programmed this Arduino to generate a basic PWM pulse on pin 9, whatever pin, and uh, uh, used its 5 volts output to supply the digital isolator both, both from this ground and from the VCC. So Arduino powers the digital isolator. Now I connect this PWM output to the digital isolator and you see the oscilloscope shows the PWM because the probe is connected to one of the PWM inputs and the motor rotates counterclockwise. You see I put this on the shaft to show you the rotation direction. So if I remove this from this input and put it on another one, you see the motor rotates clockwise. So this is the benefit of half bridge or full bridge. And if I don't connect anything to the input, uh, the circuit shows stability and it does not trigger the motor unwantedly or randomly because some circuits does like that. So it shows stability for this circuit with no input, no problem. The motor doesn't work. But if you apply PWM, that's the only case that the motor works. And the duty cycle of the PWM defines the rotation speed of the motor. Now it's 50% duty cycle. It's a basic PWM pulse. And I don't change this duty cycle. You can change this in the code. You can manually change this in your way from generator and whatever. You know that better. Test again for the clockwise. You see, the probe is on, on the other PWM. That's why it doesn't show on the screen. You see, it, uh, the motor rotates clockwise. So I think it's enough for testing and you can use higher current motors for this one. I can't say exactly, I can't mention exactly the current tolerance of these MOSFETs because it depends on your application. It depends on the heat sinks. So you will know in practice, but I'm sure it covers high currents. I can't say them, I can mention the numbers, maybe at least 20 amps. It supports 20 amps, at least. Use good heat sink if you use high power and uh, good, use good wires for connection and supply. I hope you like this video. Give me a big thumbs up. We will do something else in the next video.